Today we'll be unboxing the most expensive thing I personally have ever unboxed and that we probably ever will unbox. We'll be unboxing $221,000 in cinema lenses. Let's get started. In this box right here are my dream lenses. Leica Summa Lux lenses. Try saying that two times fast. For us, it's all about telling the best story possible, but also the tools that we use. So this is strictly just a tool that is in the box. I want this to be as educational as possible because when deciding to purchase these lenses, it was a six month process. I follow American Cinematographer, so once a month I get American Cinematographer, and in it they say the best movies out there, what lenses these big Hollywood productions are using, and why they're using those lenses. I was looking at the movies that I thought had the best visual looks to it and I've seen what lenses they were using. These are like a holy experience for me. So it's a box within a box, which is pretty standard in the film industry. To, when you order film equipment, they don't say what's on the box as far as like big, red, expensive camera. These lenses, Leica, they make four main lenses for cinema movies. The top two contenders were the Thalia lenses, which are made for full frame sensors, such as the VistaVision RED camera, or the Summa Lux lenses, which we happen to have right here in person. Now, the reason I went with this is because these can shoot at a lower T-stop. These are 1.4 T-stop. The Thalia lenses are significantly higher, which I'll have pop up right there because I don't have it memorized by heart. And another big reason is these lenses have been out for a little while now. They're fairly modern though for lenses because a lot of lenses that a lot of cinema in Hollywood are using are 20, 30 years old. I believe they came out around 2011. Movies like Stranger Things season one and two, the latest Beauty and the Beast movie, um, Justice League. These were the main lenses that they used on those productions. So it's a big deal. And a big reason why they went with this is for how sharp these lenses are. Because a lot of lenses, especially like Canon or Nikon lenses, when you don't put a ton of money into them, they'll get soft around the edges. So when the person gets near the end here or here, it starts getting soft. With these lenses, it's sharp around everything. And it's consistent as well, as far as the contrast is the same from the center all the way to the outside. And you won't get that with a lot of lenses, but cinema lenses, um, it looks significantly better. Now, with that being said, because we spent so much money on this, we're spending around $41,000 to around $36,000 is the cheapest lens that you're seeing right here. The reason why we decided to go with only six lenses is because at that point, we couldn't justify spending any more than that because we're spending 40K on some of these lenses. So we had to question, what are the top lenses that we can purchase right now that are gonna get the most use? In order to justify a purchase like this, we also have to be renting them out to help pay for it during the long term. Before we bought them, I did a ton of research on my personal favorite directors, or a lot of my favorite directors, to see what their lens of choice was. So Steven Spielberg, the main lens that he's using on a lot of his movies that he's doing is a 21 millimeter lens. So I made sure that one of the main lenses we used was a 21 millimeter because Steven Spielberg is one of my favorite directors. Shout out to my boy Steven. You know who you are if you're watching. Hopefully you're watching, but probably not. Um, Tim Burton, another incredible director, 21 millimeter lens is his go-to lens. The director who did Revenant, um, that won several Academy Awards, his main go-to lens is a 14 millimeter lens and a 16 millimeter lens. He loves those wide, epic shots. The lens that we have here, the 16 millimeter Summa Lux lens, that's one of the lenses that we bought. That's the widest one that they make, at least right now, and that's the exact lens, the 16 millimeter Leica Summa Lux that they actually used on the Revenant as well. And I did the research just to make sure that was true and that's legit fact. So one of these lenses was one of the lenses that they used on Revenant. And when I was researching that, they said, why they love that lens over a lot of the other Hollywood lenses is these, for the most part, are significantly lighter than a lot of these crazy Panavision lenses. They're doing a lot of these super long shots with these steady cam operators, and they said it was gonna be easier for the DP or the camera operator to handle when he was using the 16 millimeter lens. So keep that in mind. And some of my other favorite directors that I was looking up as I was researching this, David Fincher, um, he did The Social Network. His favorite lens was a 27 millimeter lens. They don't make a 27 millimeter lens like it, but the closest thing to that was a 29 millimeter lens. So that's why we chose a 29 millimeter lens for that. 
And I also wanted to make sure as we were researching all this, I didn't want a lot of lenses that were super similar. It didn't make sense to have a 14 millimeter lens if they made one and a 16 because they're so close together. So I made sure I kind of spaced everything out. Alfred Hitchcock, he mostly uses a 50 millimeter lens. So because he's a legend and his stuff is phenomenal, um, his cinematography is phenomenal, we made sure we had a 50 millimeter lens. The tightest lens that we decided to go with was a 75 millimeter lens. And from my research with Ridley Scott, that was his main go-to lens that he's used on movies like Aliens and a ton of his, even his newer stuff. So went through the top directors that I looked up to, looked up their cinematography and how they were doing that, and that was kind of their main lenses. So we made sure that we had those lenses in our arsenal. So in here, I am seeing the Summa Lux Leica lens for the very first time. Now, I think it's important to say too that this is our first time working with Summa Lux lenses. Um, we've done two video shoots with Summa Chrome lenses. They're the lower version of these. They're T-stop, they can't open as much. I'll have that pop up right here. But the videos, the two videos that we've done with this, um, with the Summa Chrome lenses, they cost about half as much as the Summa Lux lens. You pretty much just divide everything in half. If you're renting them, you divide that in half as well. We use those lenses just because we were working on a budget and we wanted to make sure that we could rent them for a couple days. Even though I'm unboxing these right now, they're gonna go right back in after we're done because we don't have a lens case to even carry them until they get in. I know you guys are dying to see if they come with these that absorb water. They do, and you're probably wondering why I'm holding with one hand. Well, I have two hands on it now. When you're ordering Summa Lux lenses, um, and I believe it's all of them, they have the exact same look to them. The same diameter, same sizes, you're gonna see side by side like this. Now, why is that important? Well, if I'm dealing with matte boxes, if I'm dealing with putting different filters on the lenses, you want them to be the exact same diameter, exact same size, because it's not changing your camera setup. So as far as saving time and having to deal with getting other equipment to handle different lenses, I'm not gonna have that issue, which is a big deal for me. From just holding the 27 millimeter and the 75 millimeter lens, they fill the same size. Now, we got 16 millimeter all the way to 75 millimeter. We decided to not get anything more telephoto than that because most of the stuff that we do, we're not zooming in any more than that. And we could have got something much tighter than that. 135 is what the next lens we were considering, but it's like realistically, we don't use that focal length enough to justify that compared to what we'd use a 75 millimeter more than a 135 millimeter lens. So that was the reason in case you're wondering why we don't have anything higher than the 75. Realistically, for doing more narrative stuff, we didn't feel we were gonna use it more than something like 75 millimeter. With the Summa Lux lenses, as far as the weight difference between all the lenses, because they are the same size, um, each lens is weighing three and a half to four pounds, give or take, depending on what lens you're using. But holding, um, right now I'm holding a 21 millimeter and a 75, and I can't tell the difference. So when I'm filming on a different cam camera setup, such as like a steady cam, and I switch out a lens, if the, the lens is a different size, a different weight, it's gonna make a big difference. But with these, because they are so consistently similar, same size, exactly. But as far as the weight, because they are also so similar, it's gonna be faster to balance something like a steady cam or a glide cam. I've unboxed two lenses already. We're gonna unbox all six of them right now instantly. Here we go in three, two, one. And just like that, movie magic. Any questions that you guys have, leave down below in the comments. This is all like a lot of information at once and I'm sharing everything I learned over the last six months. I would love to do my best to answer your guys' questions on it. Thank you so much for watching, over and out.